Well, good morning or afternoon, I guess. How yes. are you feeling? I'm feeling great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's been about four months since we've seen you. What have you been up to? Training. Yeah, training, taking care of my family, my siblings, and I'm just um, progressing as far as skill set wise, you know, back in the drawing board and just perfecting my craft. Did, uh, is four months kind of like a good time for you or would you have rather have gotten back sooner? Um, I think it was a good time to accumulate those skill set and kind of sharpen my tools. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. And what were your thoughts when you got the, the name for your opponent? Were you kind of excited it's a veteran or what were your thoughts? No, I was just ready to go, you know. I've acquired a lot of skills in those four months, so I really want to see what, what put them to use, you know. There's a lot of drastic changes I've made in camp and um, I'm ready. I was ready to go regardless of who it was. Are you able to tell us what those drastic changes were? Uh, I can't really say. You know? <laughs> I would just say experience. That's right. the word. And uh, what kind of fight do you predict having? Whether it's tough or easy, I'm just ready to fight, you know. I'm prepared mentally, physically, and I just want to show my skill set, you know, display what I'm made of. And, um, I know Iwan Kutilaba is a tough guy, but, so I'm, a perf I'm expecting the toughest Iwan, the toughest version of him to show up because I'm ready, I'm prepared. Are you expecting anything weird to happen in the face-off? I know he's had some, some kind of things uh, in the past. Are you uh, thinking about that? Not really. I'm Nigerian, so I've been scared since I was a, a toddler. So nothing could really scare me or spook me. So regardless of what happens, there's no ill will towards him. I mean, he's just doing him. He's just being himself. And um, the main the main thing is about the fight night on Saturday. Both of us are going to have to be locked in that cage and just have to fight. So I'm ready. I think they want you to hold the microphone closer. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Dana has spoken about uh, going to U having a UFC Africa, potentially Nigeria. Uh, what do you feel about that? I mean, it's got to be exciting for you. I mean, it's awesome. I try to focus on the now. I don't want to push things too far, you know, I try to overlook what I'm doing now, just living in the present and try to win, accumulate those wins now. And when that time comes and presents itself, I'll be ready. Are you thinking you're going to have to go three rounds with him, or do you expect to get in and out of there pretty quick? I would like to go five, to be honest. But, I mean, I don't know if that's possible. But five is perfect for me. I like it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, Kennedy. How are you? Good, man. Um, your teammate, Ryan Spann, just picked up a huge win. Um, I just wanted your thoughts on that fight, man, and just how big of a win that was. We, we all know he was capable of doing that. We, we all know that. So it wasn't surprising. I mean, we're happy. We're overwhelmingly happy because of the win. But um, once he came back on Monday to trainings, like we just we just knew he was capable of doing that. Once his mindset is right, he's like the toughest guy. So um, his win, Trey Sean's win, is perfect. He's happy. I'm happy for them. You know, those are my brothers. So the more wins for them, the, the more notoriety for the team. So I'm just ready to display my skills and add up to those. Yeah. Um, to talk about Trey Sean Gorman. Uh, a lot in all of his interviews, he said that you know he he slept it on your on your couch. Um, what did you see in him that like made you want to believe and like want to bring him in and you know like welcome into your house and, and stuff like that? Uh, I just felt like we have a similar connections, similar background, life stories, and um, we just connected that way. So after the, my fight in July 9th, we both fought on the same card and. I just felt like I had to bring him in, so I talked to him, and then we we exchanged numbers, and um, eventually I spoke to my coach, and he made the final decision of letting him in, and it, well, since there, that was history since then. How excited were you when, when he got that nasty submission win? Oh, yeah, I was super excited, because I was case side, I was cornering him, and I was super stoked. I was happy. I was happy for him, because he worked so hard, and um, he worked so hard. He deserved that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know if you watched the post-fight interview after Ryan's last fight. I was trying to start some fun, playful teasing between the, the Fordist teams and asking who was the strongest puncher, who was the hardest puncher there at the gym. Who would you say is the hardest hitter? I mean, uh, Ispan, he's the toughest guy. You know, he, he's been doing it since he's like 15, 16. So he's acquired a, 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 a huge amount of experience over the years. So, I mean, I'm coming, though. <laughs> I'm coming. He knows. I give him for a lot of problems in practice. But, um, yeah, as far as experience and skill base, yes, Span. And now you said you, you prefer five rounds. Now, yes. is that because of you want to impose your will and wear them down? Or, you know, some people would say that you have a tendency sometimes to start a little slow. Yeah. Is that partially so you can kind of get the feel of the fight? And do you feel now with three rounds you have to kind of get at it a little bit quicker than 
so as far as the starting slow part, I've, I've kind of fixed that a little bit more. You know, me and my coach, he's been, we've been focusing a lot on starting quicker, you know. We can't start slow, especially when a guy that comes in and he's a fast starter like Ewan, he's, he's going to try to take you out. So to start quick and match his energy, and for sure he's going to start to dwindle as the time goes on. And in this fight, you have an eight-inch reach advantage. And how does that play into your favor? And is that the kind of things, does that, is that just a stat on paper, or is that something that really can play a big difference in a fight like this? Oh, it could pay. It, it pays a huge difference when you utilize it very well. So if, yeah. you're, if you have long arms and you can't utilize the reach very well, it doesn't really matter, you know? So um, establishing distance and using range with those long arms and knowing, and knowing how to adequately perform, that, that really plays a huge role as far as striking-wise and him coming in. And I guess the last question for me, How's mom doing? I know that you're the primary caregiver for the for her and for the for the rest of the family. How is she doing? Is there any updates? And has there been any help in this time since you made that more aware? Is, have people came out and have you found more assistance? Um, well, the sickness, you know, there's no cure for it. But um, all I could do is just rely on my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, you know. So I've been praying a lot, you know, trying to help my mom as far as I can, you know. The nurses come by the house, too, to check up on her and get her vitals and, um, There'll be no um, progress, but um, I'm just praying. There's nothing I could do but leave it in God's hands, you know? Is that the kind of thing that this fighting, is it, is it a good distraction because you have real life problems and things at home? Is, is it nice to be able to get into an occupation where you can kind of work some things out with your hands? Um, I feel like um, I really want to be with her right now, taking yeah. care of her right now, because that means my mom, she's my rock. She, she works so hard. She's working three jobs even when she had me, so. It, it, it hurts, you know, seeing her in that condition. It, it, for anyone, it hurts to see your loved one in that condition where their muscles are just diminishing and um, they can't really speak again. They're on a trach, yeah. um, food tube, so it hurts. But um, I, I know she wouldn't want me to quit either because she's the strongest woman I know. So I just have to feed off that energy and just keep performing. She'll be happy. Well, that's very inspirational. Hopefully we'll get a nice, you'll get a nice little bonus to kind of oh. help out uh, on Saturday. Just a win. The bonus will come. Well, I'm focusing on the win, just getting the win and living in the moment. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Best yes, of luck sir. on Saturday. Yes, sir.